In this lecture, we will be discussing about control loop tuning using Jigler-Nichols method. Jigler-Nichols tuning technique is one of the most accepted and popular technique in the industry. This was first formal control loop tuning procedure and it was first introduced in 1940 by two engineers of Taylor Instrument Company, John G. Chigler and Nathaniel Nichols. In 1940, they published a paper called Optimum Settings for Automatic Controllers. And later, in December 1941, they presented the same paper in American Society of Mechanical Engineers. Since then, this, pop, this particular method has gained more and more popularity and has become one of the most prominent control loop tuning technique in, in the industry. In this technique, in this control loop tuning technique, basically it says that a control loop is optimally tuned when the response of the system over a change in the set point behaves in a quarter wave decay fashion. So let me draw and explain you. So suppose there is a control system and there you do a step change. When you do a step change, the process behaves in a certain way. But we'll say it will properly tune if the process behave in a such a way that the first peak is twice the second peak and second peak is basically twice the third peak. So if you see this, this we can call the first peak, this is, is the second peak and this is the third peak. Now you see second peak is almost half of the first peak and third peak is half of second peak. So if we can take this is B and this is A then B by A is almost one fourth. So if the control loop can be tuned in a such a way that your uh, response to set point change decays in a quarter wave fashion, then this method is used. Or this is the aim of this method. Now, how you will get the tuning parameter for such a behavior? Right? So for that, there are basically three methods. One is closed loop oscillation, another is point of inflection, and third is first order plus date time. Now, let's look into these different processes. Now for the closed loop oscillation, how to execute this process, right? So first, you need to put the controller in the automatic and keep the proportional gain low and integral time and derivative time to zero. Now change the set point and then gradually increase the controller gain until a sustained oscillation is produced. Record the controller gain and the period of oscillation. So as you can see here, what you need to do is basically if you have a controller, right? You have a controller and the controller output is going to suppose a valve and there is some sensor which is reading back the process condition to the controller. And the controller, we change the reference or we change the set point in the controller. Now, what you need to do is basically you need to put the controller into auto and then you do a 
and and at the same time you have to keep the proportional gain low and integral time and derivative time zero now here you can change the set point okay when you change the set point the controller will behave in certain fashion so what will happen if the controller gain is less than the loop gain then the oscillation will like it will die down right this is the output but if the controller gain is high then it will go in the opposite direction it will go on increasing right but when both the controller gain and the process gain matches it actually begins to oscillate so we need to change the controller gain until we reach the oscillation and when we reach the oscillation the value of the controller gain is basically the process gain or ultimate gain and the period of oscillation which is denoted by ct here is gives you the oscillation period now you have two parameters cg and ct there are mathematics i am not going into that but when you know these two parameters there is a table here which you can use to get the value of p i and d right so if you can have three different type of controller you can have p you can have p i and you can have p i d right and each of the cases what will be the controller gain what will be the integral time and what will be the derivative time they are given in terms of cg and ct so first for a p only controller it will be half of cg for pi controller it is 0.45 times cg and integral time is 83 percent of ct and for the pid controller it is 0.6 times cg 0.05 times ct and 0.0125 times ct for the derivative time so this is how you get this value now the problem is this method makes your process to oscillate and there are certain processes i would say there are many processes where the operator don't want their process to oscillate at all right so this method cannot be used there so this is i would say one of the drawback of this closed loop oscillation technique because it drives the system to oscillate okay so what are the other methods available let go into the point of inflection method in this method again you have this controller right you have this controller and controller output is going to a valve and the changes in the process you are measuring your transmitter and transmitter is feeding back to the controller and from the controller you can change the set point now earlier case you remember we have put the controller in the automatic in the closed loop oscillation case now in this case we will be putting the controller into manual right we'll be putting the controller into manual and we'll be changing the output by certain percentage say we change it by 10% we change the valve opening by the change 10% and we we keep on monitoring the uh, measured variable right this variable we will keep on monitoring it and in this way we'll record the slope and the delay so what will happen when you open the valve with certain percentage right the measured variable they they will move right they will also change so they will change like something like this now if you see in this curve there is a certain portion where the slope is going slope is changed right this is like this point this is called the point of inflection so we need to basically find the point of inflection draw a straight line identify the slope at that point so slope is defined by m here which is delta m v by delta t obviously and we have to determine the delay time right how much delay it took for the process to start responding to it so so basically we have calculated two parameters one is m and one is t when you know these two parameters m and t you need to put this into this table to get the values of controller gain 
integral time and derivative time. And again, we have three different type of controllers, P, PI, and PID. For P type controller, controller gain is 1 by mt. For PI, PI controller, it is 0 0.09 divided by mt, and integral time is t divided by 0 0.3. For the PID controller, it is 1.2 divided by mt, integral time is 2t, and derivative time is 0.5t. Now, in the point of inflection method, the main problem is to identify the point of inflection method. Because, in reality, the process will behave something like this. So, it will be, there will be like oscillations, right? So, in this case, finding a point of inflection often becomes very difficult and subjective also. So, that is the main drawback of this method. We have another method which is called first. We have another method which is known as the first order plus date time method. In this method, we have again we have a controller again, and the controller is driving a valve, and the condition process condition is monitored by the sensor and fed back to the controller, and the controller we can change the set point right so first we'll be putting the controller into manual mode and uh, then we'll change the output again here also we will be changing the output to a certain percentage and monitor the change in the process and in this time we will be noting down three different parameters which is date time process time constant and process gain and using these three parameters, we will be using this table below and we will be getting the controller gain, integral time and derivative time. So again, in this case, if you see, when you change the output valve, well, sometimes due to, due to the process friction or something, there is a dead time. The time in which the output does not respond or the time the process take to respond right so this is this this is the time it has taken to respond now if you see this is the time the process has taken uh, to respond and this time is called the dead time and after that the process again goes rises and again settles down so this is a settling time and this is another settling time the time difference between the two settle period is basically four times your process right so if you measure this time say this is t so t is equal to four times tp so tp is equal to t by four right so this is how you measure the tp or process time and then you measure the change in the output how much change it has occurred right and the total this change or this if you called it delta u this delta u is due to the output change so suppose you change the output by 10 percent so 10 percent into kp suppose it is resulting in 25 percent change so kp will be basically 25 percent divided by 10%, which will come up as a 2.5. So now you have KP, you have TP, and you have TD, three different things, right? And you, when you put it in this particular table, you will get the controller gain, you will get the integral time, and you will get the derivative time. So again, there are three different type of controller, P, PI, and PID. For P type controller, it is TP by KPD, for PI type controller, it is 0.09 into TP divided by KP into TD. And for PID type controller, 1.2 into TP divided by KP into TD. So, so ultimately, in this particular lecture, you have seen what is jiggler nickel method and how we use three different techniques to identify the tuning parameters for the jiggler nickel method. Now, jiggler nickel methods have many disadvantages and as of now you have no
two different tuning technique. One is direct synthesis and another is Jignal Nichols. So the obvious thing that comes into is your mind is which tuning method to use, whether Jignal Nichols or direct synthesis. So in the upcoming video, we'll be discussing about the differences, advantages and disadvantages of one technique over the other.